Hi everybody and welcome to part two in my video series on how I edit an image in Snapseed to go onto Instagram. Now this is part two. The first part was how I crop the image and we're looking at the cropped image now. The second part is going to be the first steps of making the image look the way I want it to look. And I can't be more clear about this. When I make this video, I'm not showing you the perfect exact way to create an image for Facebook or for Instagram. I'm just showing you how I do it because that's the thing about photography is that everybody gets to decide for themselves how they want to put their art out there. So this is what I like to do to my images and tomorrow I might want to do something different. But right now today, this is what I'm going to do to this image and I'm going to walk you through it so hopefully maybe you can pick up some tips and some ideas for your own images. So we're looking at our cropped image. We cropped it to a square so it's ready for Instagram. And the next thing we want to do is we want to start to make some changes to the image. And I immediately go towards my subject. The first thing I want to affect, the first thing I want to change is my subject. I want to make my subject look the way I want them to look and then I'll make everything around them look in a way that makes them look even better. That's kind of how my head works. So looking at him, I'm going to have to make some changes. So let's go down to the tools menu and take out all these tools and try and figure out which ones we're going to use. Now, a lot of these tools are presets, right? They're one button does all kind of uh, options uh, for your pictures or one button does a lot and then you can make kind of adjustments to it. I don't really use those tools that often because I like to tinker with my images. Part of the fun of being a photographer is tinkering with your images. So you won't see me use uh, things like head pose and uh, HDR scape and glamour glow. Uh, you won't see me use a lot of that uh, when I'm uh, editing my images. I tend to go with uh, options where I can just do everything myself. So there's two ways to adjust things like the brightness and the shadows and the highlights and, uh, and stuff like that uh, in this particular program. One is to adjust the curves and the other is to hit the tune image button. Uh, the curves button is great. You can do a lot in there, uh, but it's very technical. And I find that for speed, it's just kind of easier just to use the tune image button. So we're going to go with tune image. And now here's my image. Now, how do we want to tune it? So if you touch the screen and you go up and down, it will show you the menus of all the things that you can change. So looking at this image, you can tell that what the camera did was it kind of exposed, it, it, it couldn't find a balance. Because he's very dark and the background's very bright and it couldn't quite figure out what we were supposed to be looking at. So the background is a little too bright and he's a little too dark. Right? It, it, it cut the difference, it went to the center. So what I'm really worried about is him. I wanna make him pop a little bit more. So let's go to brightness and let's just bring up the brightness a little bit so that his face looks better. Now, trying to figure out how far you go, well, that's a tricky part. We can go like here, right? And now he's really bright, but boy, the background is overdone. We're going to have to fix that later. Hmm. I think what I like to do is look at his face and figure really what's the correct brightness for just his face. And I think that's a little dark, and I think that's a little too bright, especially if you look around the top of his head. So somewhere in the middle, right about there. That's probably going to be just about the right brightness for his face, right? So let's take a look at the other controls and see what we can, we can change and affect here. So let's go to highlights. Highlights affects the bright parts of your image. And as you can see, we have a lot of bright parts in the perimeter. So when we're on highlights, if we swipe left and right, that's how you, by the way, I better make that clear, that's how you make changes is you swipe your finger left and right. So if I go left, I can bring down the highlights. And if I go right, I bring them up. So look, right over in here if you looked over his shoulders and you see the uh, you see the cobblestones if i bring it down you see how we're starting to see a little detail in the cobblestones and if i take it up we lose all detail because that's the brightest part of the image and we're saying to the program i want the brights to get even brighter well i think that that's too much i want to see detail uh, professional photographers they always want to see what we call detail in the whites and detail in the blacks and so i want to see detail so let's go back to where we started that's still too bright. Let's take it down. And now I'm going to see some detail in there. I've gone all the way. Highlights minus 100. So let's go see what else we can mess around with. Ah, shadows. Shadows are the darker parts of the image. Do you want the darker parts to be brighter or darker? And you can go two directions with that. Shadows, can uh, you can make them darker for, for to have some power, to have some mystery. Or you can make them brighter just simply because you want to see things. So let's go left and right on shadows and see what we get. So if we go left, you can see the darks get darker. And if we go right, they get brighter. 
Well, let's start here, right at zero. Ah, that's that's a little bright, and uh, that's a little dark. And uh, yeah, you know, minus three maybe. I th I think it's pretty good to be honest. I think it's a pretty good image right there, so I'm not going to do much to the shadows. Uh, then let's go to ambiance. Let's see what ambiance does. Left and right. What do you think that that's doing? Well, I think it's messing around with the midtones, the images that are in the middle. And the midtones get darker here, and they get brighter here, but it's also doing some other stuff out there on the edges I'm not sure about. But the bottom line is, if you move it left, I don't like what it does to his face, and if you move it right, Hmm, well, wait a minute. It's picking up some of the shadows. That's the mid-tones. It's making the shadows a little bit brighter in there. Yeah, I think I do like a little bit of that. So let's take it up to right about there. I don't want to go so much that it gets crazy. Because when you do this, his face kind of looks cool. But if you look at the cobblestones, they're starting to look kind of pink. No, I just want enough to where I get a little more detail on his face right about there. Okay. So now we're looking we're looking pretty good. Now let's look at what it looked like before we started messing with it. If you go right up here to the top right, you see this little thing that looks like a book right there? If you touch that, it'll show you the image before you started to change it. So wow, what a difference we're making, right? So let's see if there's anything else in here we want to mess with. Warmth, what does that do? Well, basically it makes the picture look a little warmer, uh, a little more like natural sun. And I'm not going to mess with it because I don't want to make it look any more like natural sun. I like it uh, as crisp and clean as it is. I don't want to. I don't want to make it any warmer. Uh, ambience highlights shadows. We've done most of these. Ah, contrast. Now this is the big one. What contrast does is it makes the difference between the darks and the lights more profound. So the darks get darker, the lights get lighter, and so you get a bigger difference. As, of, as opposed to having an image that's got a lot of gray in it, you'll get an image that has a lot of black and white in it, and it tends to make an image really have some punch. It can be overdone, though. So let's take contrast. We're going to move left and right and see what we get. If we move to the right, ah, see now? If we keep all the way to the right. You see how the, the darks got really dark and the whites got really white. And if we go in the other direction, you see that everything kind of meets in the middle. Now the whites have gotten gray and the darks have gotten gray, and it's, everything's in the middle. So let's go back to contrast to the center, and then let's... Raise the contrast up just a little bit, like plus seven, because we like a little contrast on the image, right? A little contrast makes it kind of punchy. All right, let's look at before, after again. Before, after, before, after. All right, that's looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and hit the check mark, bottom right, right here, apply, and that's where we're at. This is step two. Step one was the crop, and this is step two. Now here's a cool thing. I can go right up here to the right, and I can get this uh, this little button right here, if you see this one, Edit Stack. And if I click that button, and then come down here and click View Edits, it's going to show me all the edits I've done so far. So we can go back and look at the original image. This is the image I started with. And then in my first video, I cropped it to here. And now in this video, I've tuned it up. But we're not done yet. There's more still left to do, and that will be in the next video in the series. So join me there.